Hi there. Uh, today I'm making a chemise pattern circa 1917 from Wearing History. This pattern is a bit later than I originally wanted, but chemises didn't change much from the beginning of the 20th century, so I figured it would work for my Edwardian undergarment set. I am sewing a chemise to go under my corset instead of combinations for two reasons. One, I feel like all that lace being bunched up under the garters would feel awkward, and two, I have a theory that the frilly combinations with the waistband we all love so much are actually a corset cover and drawer combinations. I have almost no research to back this up and 90% of the images say I am wrong. But I did find an advertisement from the time calling them a corset cover drawer combination set and a picture of a woman wearing combinations and between the split in her drawers, you can see the hem of her chemise. So that's what I decided to go with. That being said, I do think that the combinations under the corset look really pretty, which I think is probably why so many women back then were uh, photographed in the combinations under the corset. And you know, it could honestly just be preference, um, you know, just like today. You can wear your underwear however you want. This garment uses a 3 8 seam allowance everywhere except for on the sides. And I have video proof that I read these instructions. See, here I am reading the instructions that clearly state it is a three quarters seam allowance. Sam, it is a three quarters seam allowance. And of course, here's me sewing three eighths. Luckily, I got it quickly enough and moved it over to three quarters, and I'll unpick that later. So I just bought this ironing board and iron. Previously, we lived in a very small apartment and I couldn't fit a full-sized ironing board in there. So uh, as soon as we moved into this house, I bought these things and oh my gosh, does it make a difference when ironing. I love it. And here's me sewing the rest of those seams down with the correct 3 8 seam allowance. <laughs> The next step was to box pleat the back, but I wasn't quite too sure which way the box pleat would go. And now that I look at it, it's obvious, but so I tried it both ways. Uh, clearly, the first way is the correct way. So that's what I did. I wish I had gotten a close up on this top stitching, but it is chef's kiss. It is perfect. I've never gotten it perfect before. So. I'm pretty happy with it. And now for all the hand sewing. I machine stitched on the bias tape and then flipped it to the inside and hand sewed that down so that you couldn't see it on the outside, which was silly because then I just covered it up with trim and you couldn't see it anyway, so I kind of wasted my time. But Look at how cute my outfit is. I didn't get any other shots of me in this outfit, but I just wanted to point it out. Oh, and also Schmoopy. You'll see her in the background of a lot of my videos because she's not very far away from me at any given time. Actually, she's sitting right next to me while I'm doing this voiceover. Hey, Schmoopy. And now, after all that useless hand sewing, I get to move on to the fun part, which is the lacy bits. I had a little trouble figuring out which insertion lace I liked better. I ended up going with this wider one with the teal trim and I hated this edging. So, oh no, that means I have to go to the fabric store. How will I ever survive? And then I went a little overboard. I ended up finding this elasticated edging that I thought would work nicely. The cotton muslin I am using is a bit thick and with the added bulk of the bias tape, I was worried about how it would gather with just the ribbon doing all the work. It's a small step away from historical accuracy, but I justified it with the fact that elastic had been invented by this point. And I really do like the results. The neckline fits much better. Um, if I had to do it over again though, I wouldn't have used so much stretch, but you know, it looks good. Ting. 
time to get in my comfy onesie and sew literally all day. My hands hurt so bad by the end of the day. The trim at this point had just gotten so thick that it was just almost impossible to get a needle through it. But I did it. Also, I am terrible at hand sewing on camera. I swear I'm better than this. Almost done. Last thing that we have to do is thread the ribbon through the beading. And then it's complete. I may not have filmed much of me actually sewing, but Hurricane Sam definitely made a mess. Time to clean this up before we do the final reveal. And here she is in all of her gorgeous glory. I can just tell I'm going to live in this all summer. It's just so cute and comfortable to wear. I just love it. This was such an easy make, I ended up making a second one out of a cotton lawn that I just had in my stash because I wanted to see what it would look like with a thinner fabric. And then I used this cute beading with the two ribbons. It's so cute! Except this one I had to wear shorts under because it is see-through. But don't worry, I'm fully covered. Like I said, this was a super easy make and I love them. Um, I'm still trying to figure out whether I want to use the cotton muslin or the lawn for my combinations, but you know what? That's future Sam problems. Uh, the next thing I'm actually making is the corset. I've never made a corset before. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was freaking out a little bit, but uh, hopefully it comes out well. Um, I'm hoping to get that video up for you sometime in the near future. You know, I gotta start on it first. Uh, but if you want to see some hilarious failures and hopefully a success, uh, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. <laughs>